Uh, hello everybody, and today will be sort of two tutorials in one. So, what we're going to be doing is we're first of all, this is going to lead into a C tutorial, but this, but that's where this gets different. So, what this will be is the first C tutorial that you will do, and also at the same time, it will be how to install Sigwin for those who are interested. So, where do we start? Now, what I recommend you do. Well, there are C compilers for Windows, and there are numerous tutorials for them. I have one on Code for a Difference on YouTube, but that's quite old. And by old, I mean about four months. But I've developed a bit since then in my programming knowledge, and I've discovered this here, which is essentially a remote, is sort of a, it's a shell for Linux. It runs Bash, and you can emulate a lot of Linux within it. Well, not so much, not so much emulate it as such, but it's sort of an environment that sort of runs like the Linux inside of Windows. Sorry, I've got a bit of indigestion. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, you will f when you first go onto the Sigwin page, which you can obviously follow the URL here, or you can type it into Google, you will find this page. So, what you'll first notice is there's 32 bit and 64 bit versions. Now, most people who are doing this will probably know what bitage them, what bit width their processor is, and just go and download the one that applies to you. But for those who don't, chances are you're running a 64 bit machine, but don't take that too literally because you might not be, like, for example, if you're running Windows XP, you're most likely a 32 bit user. So just to be on the safe side, I'd download this. So, since I run a 64 bit version of Windows, I also have Linux in the other room, but I've got Camtasia for this, and that won't run on Linux. Uh, so, I downloaded the 64 bit version. That was supposed to be sort of in brackets, but you know, you can't have that very well with speech. So, I'm not using my C drive because my C drive is overflowing. So, what you do when you first find it is obviously you run it. I've already installed it, but I'll go through this anyway just to demonstrate the point because this is undeniably important so obviously you just click on here or otherwise just type in whatever directory you want it to be installed to and that's and this is what's called a package directory and that is where when you download various programs for it because you can download programs for it it's it's where they go it's when you've downloaded them so you can use direct production you, you, you can understand this I think this is more important than doing something say you can select whatever one of these wants like than using say a regular IDE and all of that and as I say I've got a tutorial on code for a difference it's the only video on the channel and basically because I decided that I got bored with that but I'm not going to get bored with this because I've discovered this and it's a lot easier to develop on this than it is on regular default windows so you're going to be met with this and you are going to be baffled, I hope, unless you already know. So, this is probably for C tutorial people, like people who are here for the C tutorial. But for those who are running Sigwin, you're not going to get a like a desktop environment. You're going to get a shell, and that is it. So you're going to want a couple of programs. So you can find all of the programs on the package list on their website. But Oh, but what I'm going to show you is basically what you absolutely require to sort of program. So first of all, because this is a C tutorial, we are going to be using GCC, which is a compiler for which compiles our C code, and because it can't run on the chip because chips use zeros and ones. I'll get onto that in another tutorial, I think, because I have some knowledge in that area. So what's that? Um, Oh no. Sorry, I just thought that might be necessary. No, it's just the source for the compiler. So you're gonna want this here because this turns our code into stuff for the machine or at least Sigwin can understand. And then second of all, because it doesn't come with many built in programs, you're gonna want a text editor. And since we've got only a command shell, you're gonna want a command line text editor. And this here is called nano. I don't have it installed because I this is a fresh install. So what this is is yeah, an essentially an enhanced clone of the Pico editor, 
and what that is is a very easy to understand sort of text editor running in cursors well I won't baffle you with that essentially well if you want to know what it is it's cursors mode and cursors is the, the is a sort of library which handles console input and output I should know because I've programmed in it so what this essentially is is a text editor that you'll want so you'll want to install that and that's really about it though probably for later tutorials yeah so probably if you're going to do later tutorials I would get something called this now don't touch this by the way yet don't touch it yet because I'm going to do a tutorial for this because I am currently learning how to use it it's something entirely different to see it's a lot more difficult it's a lot closer to the metal if you know what I mean so what assembler is is it's a sort of it is like a compiler that I've mentioned for C except it's except when you've got a compiler it translates your code into assembly which is what this comes in so it's essentially an assembler well it essentially convert, it turns the C code into assembler and then an assembler translates this into something called an object file which is a sort of an intermediate language if you ever open one in a text ev editor it will look like a bunch of rubbish and well it will look like a bunch of rubbish to somebody who isn't hasn't got like a PhD in it because I can't read them. S and then we have our linker, and our linker comes with our compiler. But in assembly, it doesn't come with that because you can do things without libraries. And then it links it together in a full executable, and that's how essentially compiling works. Now, I hope that wasn't too terrible of, a, of an explanation, but I imagine it is. So when we've done that, we're going to click next and we just let it install all of the required packages and all of the dependencies and all that because you don't want them just having that and so yes so you you don't want them running without things so like if you've ever played a game without a DLL or something it'll complain and it won't run now this so dependency is in the same way so we're just going to run that and it's going to install now it may take a few minutes for me because I have actually not installed these I decided that I was going to go in vanilla but I think this will probably take a very little time so I will start by going over what we're going to be doing so essentially listen rather than look because the listen the listening is where it's at you know that was awful I apologize so what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial is basically going through how to program in C with the Sigwin environment which I've explained earlier is sort of a Unix slash Linux slash basically anything that isn't Windows or Macintosh. Well, we Macintosh is sort of like that, but so basically it's Bash. So we're basically going to use that, and we are going to program various things. We're going to pro. We're going to learn the language, and I will set various tasks at the end of the fifth tutorial. At the end of the fifth tutorial, so like they go on in five five tutorial chunks so like at the end of the fifth tutorial we'll have something cool to do like a game at the end of the tenth tutorial you might have something else cool to do like I don't know write to a file on the end of the fifteen one you can do whatever and we will it will obviously unravel how I plan it though I have got the first few couple planned I've got the first few couple now that's great English isn't it so yeah I've got the first few planned and so yeah so we're going to be learning the various intricacies of the C language we're gonna be perhaps learning inline assembly but that'll probably be like the thirty if the if I ever even get as far as thirty tutorials it'll be like the thirtieth because you will need some understanding of C and you will need some understanding of the machine that you're working on to do that. Because you simply can't program an assembler unless you know what machine you're running on. So on the off chance that you're not running an x86 machine and you're running an ARM machine you're probably running Linux anyway because you're running a Raspberry Pi and I think that probably applies to maybe 95% of people unless you're running an Acorn Archimedes in which case how the heck are you viewing this and also damn yeah I'm definitely recording just make sure I was recording so yeah I am gonna pause this and when it's done I am gonna come back so this here is 
our this here is Sigwin. So we can do what we want now. So first of all, I assume you know how to use DOS, so I've got no directories in this because this is a new one. So first of all, so this here tells us to create a directory called this. And that creates our directory. So you can see here dear tells us where it was. The C D programming moves us into that directory. So I'm assuming most of you already know that. But this is the point where it becomes more C related. So here we are. And we are now going to move to our hello world directory. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna type nano because we installed that text editor, remember? So we're gonna go nano main dot c. And here is our file. So what this does, what this is, is it is our file which we write C code into. So we write C code into here, we save it and then compile it and it creates our executable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. That's not that. So what this is here is this is the first line that we're gonna put in our language, in our you know, in our file. What this does is it allows us to use some functions on something called a library. And what a library is is a bunch of little features that you can use to do various things that you would other that would otherwise take forever to do, like for example, print text to the to a console or draw a or take user input or perhaps draw a bitmap or something. So what this essentially does is it allows us to import it and save time. So now we're gonna do this. That's not like that. So what this is here is our main function. Now what this does, it's very important that you call it main. You can't call it anything else like in Java perhaps. I think it's the same in Java but Excuse me, I'm not very good at Java. So what this does here is that this executes automatically on runtime. That's it. That, sorry, it was the point. It was you can't. You have to name it that rather than naming the class something and then just putting in a main method. So what this does is it executes automatically when you when you run your program. So yeah. Then we're going to put this in here. Now, what this does here is that it returns a number when you run the through the when you run through this method and it's important because you can get these things called exit codes which can help you see bugs in your program as such. So include that, otherwise also the compiler does a paddy, so yeah, if you don't wanna if you don't wanna piss off the compiler, you're gonna wanna do that as well. So then we're gonna do this. So what this is here is in fact our our function that allows us to print a number to the, our little our little string here to the screen. So this is what they call a string literal, which is essentially just like putting the brackets over something and calling it a string. So what this printf does is it prints this to the screen. So our console. So when we compile this and run it, it will print it will put this to the console, alright? So then to save we go control O and then we press enter and then to exit we go control Z or control X even. It's just I use Linux and I, uh, it often works control Z. So then what we do when we're done with that we go GCC slash O the name of our program so we're going to call it hello and then main.c Note that this the pro that the file with the name of main defined in it has to come always has to come first because that's how the how the program is assembled as far as I know. So we're going to press enter and it's now compiled. So let's so what it's done is it's turned R C compiled R C code into assembly and then it has made object files with a built-in assembler that the compiler comes with. 
And then this, in turn, links to our library that we mentioned earlier, stdio.c, or standard input and output if you want to get sound smug and rather long. So then it links it in, and then it creates our compiler, our compiled little executable. Now please note, if you're running this, this won't run in Windows, it will only run in Tiguin because of various dependencies. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run it. Note, please note, again, that you run things a lot differently well you run things differently in this rather than Linux because if you just typed hello for example don't work but if we put this it shows the machine that we're referring to our current directory and we'll execute the executable huh how apt so it will execute the executable within this current directory so when we press this boom hello world now, there's something I just forgot to explain. So, this here is what they call a new line. Now, what this is, is a carriage return and a line feed character, which essentially means you can skip the next line. So, I believe this is the conclusion of the first C tutorial, and we will be uploading more, definitely, probably tomorrow. And we will be getting more complex, more interesting, and you'll finally be able to get to make those games that you've always wanted to make. Because I know I did when I started. So, thanks for watching, and see you later.